All right, Arc Striders, your time to shine is now. The Arc Strider Hunter got some amazing perk synergy with the release of Arc 3.0. And today, we're going to pair that revamped Arc subclass with an exotic that does what hunters do best, going invisible. Not only that, you'll be able to punch everything to death and vanish in an instant. Doesn't matter if they're champions in Grandmaster Nightfalls or Hive Guardians in Master Content, nothing will be able to withstand the sheer power behind this build. On top of that, I'll go over the mods that make this build shine and let you have a super every 30 seconds. First and foremost, this build centers around the hunter exotic helmet, Assassin's Cowl. With its intrinsic perk, Vanishing Execution, Charged Melee Defeats grant invisibility and restore your health. Finishers or final blows against tougher targets increase the duration of invis and the amount of health and shields restored. Which just means you'll be taking full advantage of the maximum 13 seconds of invisibility on a subclass of the Night Stalker. Now, let's get into the subclass setup that's going to make sure you reap the benefits of this exotic to the maximum degree. Starting off with your Super of Choice, and this is up to you, however, I recommend the new Super ability Gathering Storm, as it gives you a nice burst DPS option. Though the arc staff can come in handy if you find yourself overextending and needing to get out of a sticky situation. For your dodge, you're going to want Gambler's Dodge, as this will refund your melee when dodging your enemies, allowing you to completely cycle abilities with Combination Blow, stacking up to 3 times for a total 180% increase to your melee damage, 60% per stack. Defeating an enemy with this charged melee will refund your class ability. So you see the back and forth here, dodge, defeat an enemy with your charged melee, get your dodge back, dodge again to get your melee back, and so on and so forth, getting your stacks up and keeping the chain going. Lastly, for grenades, again, this is up to you, but I tend to run the pulse grenade. Jumping to the aspects, we start off with Lethal Current. After dodging, your next melee attack jolts your target, creates a damaging aftershock, and has increased lunge range. Additionally, damaging any jolted target with your melee blinds them. For the second aspect, we have Flow State, where defeating a jolted target makes you amplified, and while you're amplified, your dodge recharges faster, you gain a damage resist when dodging, and your reload speed is greatly increased. So essentially, you'll be dodging around left and right, punching everything to death, creating waves of arc lightning with an area of effect damage. Oh, and all while invisible, thanks to Assassin's Cow. For our four fragments, these are going to strengthen our abilities and the benefits we receive from those aspects. Starting off with Spark of Resistance, while you're surrounded, which is all the time, you're more resistant to incoming damage. What that equates to is an additional 25% damage resistance. With Spark of Amplitude, rapidly defeating targets while you're amplified will create an orb of power, both boosting your super energy and playing into ability cooldowns. Again, in the cooldown reduction department, we have Spark of Ions, which creates an ionic trace for defeating jolted targets. And lastly, Spark of Feedback, which, while oftentimes tough to take advantage of, will give you a 75% boost to your melee damage for a short time after receiving melee damage. This one is kind of high risk, high reward, and oftentimes results in overkill, but hey, why wouldn't we want to dish out the most damage we possibly can? Now, it seems only fitting that we pair a melee focus build with one weapon in particular. Not only that one type of weapon, but specifically any shotgun with the perk 1 2 punch. By hitting a target with all 12 pellets from your shotgun before using your charged melee, you'll deal up to 350% increased damage depending on the enemy type. To make this even better, you'll look to craft one of a few available shotguns with the enhanced perk, which allows you to only have to hit 10 pellets for max damage, which definitely comes in handy during those run and gun moments. Lastly, for the mods I recommend for a build like this, and you guessed it, we're going to look at some melee focused mods to keep us in the fight longer and bolster our abilities. First and foremost, Melee Wellmaker is the obvious choice to create arc elemental wells when defeating targets with your charged melee. Pairing that with Well of Ions, picking up an arc well will allow your next melee to deal 30% more damage. The Bountiful Wells will create a second arc well every time Melee Wellmaker procs off an enemy defeat. Next, you'll want Elemental Charge to become charged with light when scooping up those arc wells. And that brings us to the reason for becoming charged with light in the first place, Striking Light. While you're charged with light, defeating combatants with your melee consumes one stack of charge with light and spawns one orb of power. Essentially, you can cycle getting melee kills with creating orbs of power and arc wells to recharge yourself with light and give you a limitless source of super and ability energy. Additionally, you'll gain damage resistance while sprinting. There are a plethora of support mods you can run to further boost your super and ability gains. Running the mod hands-on on an arc helmet for additional super energy on melee kills. Impact induction on solar arms to get grenade energy back on melee hits. Innervation on solar legs to reduce your grenade cooldown for every orb you pick up. And bomber on your class item to reduce grenade cooldown every time you dodge. I'm honestly surprised I don't see more hunters running this build as it allows you to literally face tank everything from Grandmaster Nightfalls to master level content like raids and lost sectors. On top of that, by clearing out a single room of enemies, you can have your super in under 30 seconds. I'm not even remotely kidding. 
Just look at the background gameplay of me casually rolling around and slapping dregs and champions alike, making a Grandmaster Nightfall look like a patrol zone. While a build like this is certainly one of, if not the strongest Arc Strider build we've ever seen, there are some limitations that will stop it from being effective in every scenario. Certain boss fights that involve more range may see its effectiveness limited to add clear, but that doesn't mean you can't slap on something like Font of Might and a solid Arc Linear or Rocket Launcher for some good old fashioned range DPS. Hell, you could even run this build with double special weapons and pair it with something like Tractor Cannon to debuff targets before you punch them into nothing. As far as the desired stat spread for this build, it's a little different than most other Hunter builds. You only really need to spec into Resilience. Mobility and Strength are negated thanks to the Ability Loop, your Grenades and Super will recharge quickly thanks to the mod setup, and you will heal when defeating enemies with Combination Blow. Feel free to spec into whatever you want, but I personally would recommend Discipline and Intellect. With this build, your fists are your primary weapon as you slip in and out of invisibility just long enough to punch your enemies to death. That's it for today's video. If you enjoy it or found any of the information at all useful, then a like is greatly appreciated and consider subscribing for more Destiny 2 content. That's it for me. I'm done. I'm out and I'll see you all in the next one.